<clears throat> Bang, Neves Knives. I'm Jared, my lovely wife, Kara's busy. And in this talk, in this video, we're going to talk about Civivi's new 14C28 on steel. We're also going to talk a little bit about steel, but mostly about this steel. Now, I just want to say right off the bat, spoiler alert, I'm very, very impressed with their 14C28 on. I'm actually more impressed with their 14C28 on than I have been with any other 14C28 on. I just want to just get that right off the bat. Now, um, I'm specifically talking about from my personal EDC use and my sharpening of it. Okay, I've sharpened all three of these, and I actually did this one a little bit different just to kind of test it out. We'll talk about that in a second, but um my use doesn't have anything to do with uh any scientific use like i'm not taking cuts like say outpost 76 or any of the other guys cedric and ada that are cutting the same material over and over through my cutting it's always different thicknesses different kinds different materials so on and so forth but, you know, I still get a good idea of how long my edge is going to last, you know, because how I, I, you know, I, right now I probably have 50 knives around me, you know, I've tested them all and way more in other places. My point is, is, you know, I do still use a lot of knives, so I have a pretty good idea of when I'm feeling a decent heat treat. Now I can't, I can't like put my name on that, you know, and say that that's a hundred percent accurate without seeing one of their tests as well. I'd love to see Outpost 76 or Cedric and Ada test their 14C28, 14C28 on hell. I will send them the knife. Um, so if one of you two are watching this, get a hold of me. I'll send you a damn knife. We can get this test done because I'd love to see you guys test it now. Um, starting off with the factory edge, I noticed the factory edge did pretty good, um, better than I normally see from 14C 28N. And, you know, it's not that 14C 28N is just something spectacular, right? It's not that it's just spectacular, but it's great. It's good. It's especially good for the money, um, for one. Number two, it's easy for companies, regardless of the company we're talking about, to heat treat it because it does good. Uh, you know, from a, a large gap of HRC. So like say if it was at 56 HRC, it does good. If it was at 57 HRC, it does good. If it's at 58, if it's at 59, it does good. Now, I don't know where greatness comes in. Is it at 58? Is it at 59? Is it at 60? I personally don't know. I'm not a metallurgist, but I know that, that about 14C28 and that that's one of the reasons why it's easy. Um, it's a simple steel, so to speak, and it's simple for them to do it. Now, when they do say get a little bit lower, it's still going to do good. Is it going to do as good as if it was a little bit higher? Probably not, but it's still going to do great. Now, other steels like say M390 or D2, they don't do that. If it's not, let's just say if it's not in a certain HRC or because even if the HRC is correct, that doesn't mean the heat treat's done right. And I'm trying to put this in a very simple term for everybody to kind of understand. So if the heat treat's done right, which I'm not honestly even uh, that knowledgeable about this, to be honest. You know, I'm a dum-dum when it comes to this compared to a lot of other people. But, um, but if the heat treat's done right, <clears throat> or sorry, if the heat treat's not done right, or if it's done right, but, uh, the, you know, basically what I'm trying to say is that they're harder to heat treat. They, there's, it's more of a thinner gap or thinner line of how, you know, like what they can do with it, like with the temperature and, you know, how fast, you know, it's got to cool and the, the tempering and everything for some steels. Like, you know, like I said, M390, like basically if it's, and then also like with M390, if, it's not above, like, say, 62 HRC, which is the Rockwell. It's the hardness of the steel. It's not going to perform good. You might as well be getting S30V. At least that's what a lot of the tests have shown. That when you, if you, if it's heat treated and say if it's at 60, it's going to perform basically like S30V. You know, maybe a little bit better, but it's, but once you get over 62, 63, 64 HRC, that's when you see the peak performance of that steel 
come out. And it also has to have a good heat treat. I'm not saying, you know, that's the only thing. Um, I don't think anybody has ever said that that's the only thing. Um, but, and let me just be clear, I never claimed to know everything about anything. And anybody who knows more than I do, please leave it down in the comments. I would love to hear you know, um, your guys' opinion on it, or if I'm wrong about something, let me know down in the comments, please. But, and you know, and I, I read them all and I'll, I'll answer back. Um, I'm not just saying that to get some comments. I actually use my comments actually just to be clear anyway so when sharpening this though i you know the their 14 c28 on civivis i noticed just how good it felt on the stone just right off the bat it felt very very good on the stone now 14 c28 on usually does i you know i i've never really had 14 c28 n that i was like man this stuff sucks and that's what i mean it's easier for companies to heat treat so therefore it's usually done pretty good but i you notice things like i you know even between other steels let's say other steels when i sharpen a knife from one company that's m390 and i know it's m390 but it's not that great versus another company that actually is good i can feel the difference i could put both on the stone and tell you pretty quickly which one's bad and which one's good it, you you feel it you really do and after sharpening a lot of knives you really start understanding what that means and just like as you progress through your stones you can really tell you know which one's done better and like with this stuff how it felt on the stone, it feels really good. And then the way it takes a polish. Now I've found 14C20 then, some take a very good polish. I found a lot of them take a good polish. But then I've seen, I found some that don't, some that, uh, that, you know, it's like when you get up to the polish, it just doesn't keep the amount of bite that maybe others do. Um, and it just, it tends to like a little bit lower of a grip pattern or, you know, higher of a micron than, you know, than, uh, maybe another one. But with these, it's man, it polished up so good. All of these, um, I'll, we'll look at the edges here in a second. I just got done with this one and I did it on a ceramic. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but once I got to, to say a certain grit, I noticed right away, bam, I, I, I can tell right now this thing is going to take a good polish. Then once I got to my polishing stone, how good it took a polish, how good it felt on the stone, how easy it took a polish, how keen that edge feels, just how nippy. It's not smooth at all. Like some edges, you know, like you'll get a polish on and you can just run your fingers back and forth, right? <laughs> now with this stuff. You get to a polish with this stuff and you got a good angle and you're sh if you sharpen it correctly, whoo. I'm talking about screaming sharp, screaming sharp. Like this right now, I can go right through a paper towel. Maybe I will here in the end and we'll show that. Um, but with this one, I sharpened up a little bit differently. So with these ones, I sharpened on my Venive Diamond Stones. Basically a resin bonded stone with diamonds infused through and through the resin. So the more, you know... Um, it's all the way through, so you never knock the, the, the diamonds off like a diamond plate. A diamond plate, eventually you'll wear them out. With these, it takes a very, very long time. So that's how I did these two right here, was on those stones. And they felt great. They felt great. Now, with this one, I started with, um, I used just these two. So what I did was I went to 14 micron, 20 slash 14 micron, and I went from 160 to basically 20 slash 14 micron. Then I went to my Spyderco ceramic, which I don't pull this thing out a ton. I mean, I used to, I used to use it a lot, but lately, you know, I've really liked the, the Venive stone, so I haven't been really too, you know. Anyways, my point is, is then I put it on this to see, okay, let's see how it does on the ceramic. Because in my opinion with the ceramic stones, I like the ceramic stones for certain steels. But some steels just don't do that great on it, in my opinion. Will it take a polish? Yeah, it'll take a polish. Yeah, it'll look good. But if you don't hold your angle great, right? If you don't hold that angle nice and perfect, and get that angle really good so that that edge is nice and keen because 
unlike, say, the Veneve stones <clears throat> that cut steel, this mostly pushes steel. Does it remove some steel? Yeah, of course, but not to the extent of those. This is mostly like massaging the steel, kind of. You know, and that, you know, I'm obviously just speaking, you know, for the most part, like obviously it still removes steel. You can see it when it runs across the stone. You can see the steel on there. But my point is, is that uh, you have to hold that angle really good. And if you can do that, and if the steel is done good, you will get a very, very keen edge off of a ceramic. You absolutely can. You can also mess up your edge too, you know, with any, just like with any stone. But when I put it on there, it took a very, very good edge. Now it's not as polished as my Veneve stones over there. Um, you can probably see some grip pattern if we zoom in a little bit. You know, it's not like the most mirror. It's, uh, you know, it's decent, but yeah, you can see a little bit of grip pattern there a little bit, but it's almost a full mirror. It looks good. And you can see how flat it is. It's a nice flat edge matches up from one side to the other, but damn it. Is it sharp? It took an incredible, now which one? If you, if anybody was asking out there, which one got sharper? Neither one. They're both about the same because both of these took an, an amazing, amazing edge. I personally like the Venise a little bit better than using the ceramic, but there's nothing wrong with the ceramic. The ceramic wears slower too. So, um, I'm glad where I started was at the 14 micron because I wouldn't have wanted to start lower. Now it did polish very fast. You know, it did get to this pretty quick coming off of the 14 micron. It still had a scratch pattern on it. So it still has a scratch pattern It's not quite too polished yet, or even the beginning. It's like basically the stone right before the next stone, which is going to start a polish 1200 grit, something like that. I'm not positive what the grit is, but you know what I mean? It's like right before you get to the grit pattern of it's going to polish anyways. But once I hit it on the ceramic, it didn't take long at all. I was on there a couple, maybe two minutes per side. If that, if that, and yeah. And then I didn't even have to, um, uh, you know, I did do a couple passes removing the burb and then I hit it on the strap, but damn it. Is it sharp? So I'm very, very impressed with the steels with their 14 C 28 on. Now, is it going to get great? better let's say better edge retention than say other 14 c28 on i don't know that's why i'd love to see these other guys test it out i don't do those testing cuts could i yeah of course i could but i leave it to them they're the professionals in that and and i love their content i'm not trying to steal their thunder or anything like that and i would love to see them do it i you know support it 100 like i said i'll even throw the knife in them you know to them or send the knife to them anyways now what did i say i was going to talk about now do i notice a big difference between their 14 c28 on and let's say kershaw's yes and no so yes i do to an extent like i like kershaw's 14 c28 on i think they do a hell of a job with it and most of the time I, you know, it feels really good on the stone. It gets a good polish. Sometimes, though, it doesn't do as, you know, as good. So far, like I said, I've only done these three, but these three have all felt the exact same. Now, with Kershaw's, it's kind of like that. They're usually very, very similar, but I have found a couple, and I've done probably, I don't know, 10 knives, maybe, maybe or more in uh, Kershaw's 14C. But, um, <clears throat> I'm curious if the edge retention is going to be higher with their 14C compared to other companies now. And I'm also curious, what HRC are they bringing this to? Is it higher or, you know, than, uh, because like we said, you know, uh, 14C does great on a, on a larger spectrum, you know, you know, from a mid-range 50s to high 50s, you know, low 60s or whatever. I don't even know if anybody's ever brought 14C28 on to a, you know, 61 or 62. They might not have. Now, the question is, does it get brittle? 
right? Is it going to get brittle now? I don't know. I haven't found it to be brittle. I use the heck out of them before my review with all of these. And I didn't notice any type of brittleness. Now, was I chopping with it? I Maybe I should have chopped with it a little bit to really see, but I didn't. Um, now, some people are probably thinking, well, those stones, you know, yeah, you got these really expensive stones, of course. I guarantee, I don't care if you have the work sharp precision guided sharpener like this for 50 bucks you're going to be able to get just as good as an edge is maybe not just as good but you're going to be able to, yeah you probably could to be honest because what's that diamonds and ceramics same thing i did with this one so you should be able to get just as good of an edge now the one problem with the work sharp is that they should have a thousand grit stone or 1200 grit stone before the ceramic but they don't they go from 300 600 to the ceramic that's their biggest problem with that system. The system is great. Can you get a polish with the ceramic? Absolutely. You just have to spend more time on it. My point is, is that, remember, I said I spent less than two minutes per side with this on the ceramic versus other steels when I did it on the Worksharp with their ceramic. I had to spend like 10 minutes per side to get a polish, if not longer, 15 minutes per side. If I would have had a 1,000, 1,200 grit stone in between the, the 600 and the ceramic, the ceramic would have went very fast. You know, that's just, you know, it's not that big of a deal. And in all honesty, the way I would use that system if I was anybody, because I know a lot of people do have this system. Do your 300 grit, do your 600 grit. Get a burr on both sides off your 600 grit and use your ceramic to knock the burr off. Watch how good your edge is. Try that. I guarantee you'll love your edge. Just use the ceramic just to knock the burr off. After, you know, you've done both sides. You'll probably do really good. So, if any of you guys have Civivi 14C28, and let me know how it's been for you. Has it been chippy? Have you noticed anything like that? I'd love to hear that. Like I said, I haven't noticed anything, but, you know, I, I don't think I've really, you know dropped them or you know tried to chip them maybe i should try maybe that'll be my next test but yeah i i'm i'm impressed with it i'm impressed with it now why is 14c28 and this will be the last thing and i'll let you guys get out of here because i know we're already at 17 minutes why is 14c28 on good why why do i like it so much it's a, a it's a, a budget steel well arguably a budget steel. i would call it a mid-grade steel but let me put it this way I personally like it a little bit better than even S35VN. Now, I like S30V more than S35VN. Why do I like S30V better than S35VN? Now, this is just all my own humble opinions. Well, one, I find that with S35VN, I have to put a toothy edge on it. It's my favorite kind of edge, so it's not that big of a deal. My favorite edge is probably a 600 grit edge, in all honesty. Um, but... If I want to put a polished edge with S30V, I can. S30V takes a fantastic polished edge or a toothy edge, either one, right? It does good all the way around. And I get better edge retention than S35VM. Now, S35VM is supposed to be a little bit tougher or a little bit stronger. Um, people were complaining about chippiness from S30V. Maybe they were getting it. Maybe they weren't. I don't know. I, you know, I, the only time I've ever really seen S30V get chippy was from like a burnt edge. That's it. After I sharpened it up a few times, it went away. That's my personal experience. Um, like I, I've had it a couple times on Benchmades, um, uh, a couple times on Spider Coast. But like I said, after I sharpened it up, two edges, maybe, yeah sometimes even just one but you know a couple edges bang it's gone it's not chippy no more so they went to s35 vn i think that's the reason why they did it and then s35 vn doesn't doesn't have that issue as bad maybe it doesn't get a burnt edge as quick off of a you know off the belt grinder i don't know i have no idea but i do know that i've sharpened a hell of a lot of it and i get way better and i've used a hell of a lot of it i get better edge retention out of s30 v and I like to sharpen it better. I just do. So if I'm going to spend a bunch of time on a stone, not a bunch of time, but you know, if I'm going to sharpen my knife, I'd rather sharpen the steel I prefer better. Is there anything wrong with S35? No. 
But you see it on very expensive knives, right? You see it on very expensive knives. Now, how does that relate to 14C28M? I don't personally see that much better edge retention from S35VN. Does it get better edge retention? Yeah, it obviously does. It's a little bit better steel. But I mean, for the price, like if I get, let's let's say if I get 10% better cutting performance out of S35VN, but I'm paying $100 more for it, I don't care. Right. <laughs> Give me the less, the 10% less. I sharpen my own knives. I don't care about that. You know, I'd rather save the money. Now, don't get me wrong. I still like S35VN. And if it's on a really nice knife that I love the profile of the grind, I think it's great. Blah, blah, blah. Like the Sabenza. I'm happy with it. It's just fine. I don't like that. I can't put a polished edge on it. I can put, let me, let me be clear. It'll take a polished edge just fine. It just, it won't be that. It won't have a lot of bite. That's what I see. So it won't be as aggressive. Like it'll be slick. If you guys ever sharpen an edge and it felt slick after, that's what I see from S, usually from S35, not always, but usually. So, but there's a lot of knives that I love with S35 VN. But when it comes to a lot of these user steels and, you know, a lot of these steels, I don't, I, you know, I have no problem when I see 14C28N, I almost feel like I'm getting about as good as S35VN. I'm, I'm in happiness. I mean, like I'm, I'm happy with it. It's a great performing steel. I know it's going to come with a good heat treat. I know it's going to sharpen really good. And when I see it done really good, then I'm very happy with it. And since I know it's easy for them to do, I'm usually pretty happy to see it. Now with this stuff, I'm very happy to see Civivi using it, and I'm very happy seeing how they're doing it. I would love to know their HRC, what they're taking it to, and I would love to know if the edge retention is any better. This video has gone on long enough. I'm sorry for the rant. I love you guys. Peace.